It seems like more and more every day, Wayland is becoming the default display server protocol for most Linux projects. Two big projects have recently enabled Wayland as a default, and we're going to be talking about those, but I want to get into what is Wayland and its goal, including some of the key features and differences between the X server versus the Wayland server protocol and why its adoption has been prevalent in the last few years. So what is Wayland? Well, to break it down, Wayland is a display server protocol that's built in C and facilitates the communication between a compositor, which is just a display server, and its clients, so things that connect to that display server, aka things with graphical interfaces, such as web browsers, text editors, terminal emulators, so on and so forth. You can imagine clients being any application or process that needs to communicate with a display server has to talk through a protocol, and that's where you get Wayland and or X. So where does Wayland show up? As of 2020, most Linux distributions support Wayland straight out of the box. So some notable ones here is Fedora, starting with version 25 quite a while ago. From 2016, it uses the Wayland for the default GNOME 3.22 desktop session. X.org is a fallback driver if something does not support Wayland. Ubuntu ship with Wayland as well. Notably, even switch back to Xorg by default because of so many issues. But since Ubuntu 21.04 also uses Wayland, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Debian, Slackware Linux, Manjaro, and many, many others now ship with Wayland by default. Toolkits that support Wayland include Q5, SDL, and desktop environments. Some of our favorites have imported from X to Wayland, including GNOME, KDE, and Enlightenment. There's, of course, many other projects and software that have defaulted to using Wayland, but you might be asking yourself why. Well, first off, we got to understand the goal here of Wayland. As you can tell on their website here, it specifically says the goal of the language is Wayland is a replacement for the X11 windowing system protocol and architecture with the aim to be easier to develop, extend, and maintain. And this is exactly what they've done and why it is so popular. I want to talk about some of those features that Wayland boasts over X11, including things like one, a simplified architecture. Wayland employs a more straightforward architecture compared to X11's complex client-server model. When using Wayland, the compositor directly manages input and output, reducing latency and even enhancing performance. Another reason is enhanced security. The way Wayland is designed, it helps isolate applications from one another. That way, it mitigates the risk of unauthorized access between applications. Another big deal is three, it has modern features. So with modern graphics technologies and user interfaces, we get better support for things like high DPI displays, smoother animations. We gain more configurations, including extra desktops and embedded systems. These are all fantastic modern features that Wayland helps boast. And one other mention I wanna make is number four, which is an active community, which is perhaps the most important. Unlike X11, which is currently really just maintaining itself at this point and not really actively developing, not only is Wayland being maintained, but there's ongoing and new development taking place, which makes it really an attractive choice for modern Linux projects, aiming to deliver a more efficient, secure, and modern user experience. So these are some of the main reasons why we see so many projects going towards. And I wanna talk about a couple of those projects that have recently adapted the Wayland protocol. One big one that you may know is Wine. Starting with Wine 9.22, Wayland driver has been enabled as the default configuration. And this is due to the fact that Wayland has been making huge strides as a display server protocol in the last few years, including things like explicit synchronization, tearing protocol updates, which help in gaming scenarios where reduced latency is preferred over visual consistency, and even incorporated in the WL roots not that long ago and has also been adapted by the Sway project. There's also individual window capture that recently got added in, which we're gonna talk about. But with all this collaboration in the Wayland community, and that's why it's important that it got added into Wine as a default driver, although it will come with some compatibility challenges. You can imagine legacy applications, older applications, including games that were optimized for X11 might not work perfectly under Wayland. And that's why you have projects like X Wayland, but at the same token, Wayland introduces a different rendering pipeline compared to X11, which can help improve performance in some cases, but we get stricter input handling and Wine choosing Wayland as a default signals a forward-looking approach for the project, as it is one of the biggest projects in Linux. And in other big recent news, the newest release of Raspberry Pi OS has seen a new Wayland compositor as well. It's called 
LabWC. And the way that they phrased it, they said, today we are releasing a new version of Raspberry Pi OS. This version includes a significant change, albeit one we hope most people won't even notice. So we thought we'd better tell you about it to make sure you do. Anyways, they give us a brief history of the X windowing system and why they chose to go over to Wayland. But some of the reasons cited here and some that we've already talked about is performance improvements, improved security, future proofing, being able to optimize this compositor for Raspberry Pi hardware, backward compatibility, and incorporating X Wayland while that's all happening while seamlessly staying atop the Wayland compositor, there's gonna be an enhanced touchscreen experience, hopefully energy efficiency increase. So you might be now seeing an update notification if you do make an update that your Raspberry Pi has been upgraded and can now run LabWC. You can also switch or keep the old compositor. It doesn't matter, but they recommend that most people go ahead and switch to LabWC. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button for me Let's keep moving on and talking about Wayland some more. Again, one of the main points I wanna drive in is the fact that there's active development here. They're constantly adding new protocols, working on updates and improvements. For example here, recently an improvement to the Wayland protocol by adding the XDG top level icon to allow Windows to set dedicated icons. AKA, you can see in here, these varying apps have different icons depending on what they are. This looks like some PCB software a different type of PCB software, but you get it. Small improvements, but nonetheless, they are improvements to give us a more modern display server. We continue on to another one. For example, an extension image capture source V1 and extension image copy capture V1. This is a new screen copy protocol, which improves the unstable version. Again, doesn't seem like a massive change, but it's a constant improvement. And these types of improvements is what make the Wayland project so great. Now we're not gonna get away from Wayland without talking about known significant issues, just like the ones that happen on KDE Plasma. As one significant one that I wanna talk about is accessibility support in Wayland is currently, in my opinion, not great. And it affects specifically users who depend on screen readers or other assistive technologies and is a significant shortfall of Wayland. So a lot of projects have to use X11 or X Wayland in order to actually implement older accessibility tools. And the major reason of this issue on lacking accessibility support is just the sheer complexity of trying to implement these types of tools into the Wayland design, which differs a lot from X11, which in X11, the server actually has knowledge of application content versus in Wayland's design, it involves a more complicated dance, including submitting things like frame buffers without the compositor understanding their content and complicates implementation for accessibility features. So in my opinion, that's a pretty big one, but we see more and more projects leaning towards Wayland and even defaulting it into their projects. Anyways, Plasma or Wayland, known significant issues. Well, there's a lot here. I'm gonna put this in the description below so you can read more about it. This page tracks known issues in KDE Plasma. So another notorious issue is worse performance on external monitors connected to NVIDIA Jeep. There have been problems with Wayland and NVIDIA working well together against accessibility. Like I mentioned, can't move pointer with numpad keys, slow keys feature does not work, graphics tablet support, can't switch between absolute and relative modes, can't create multiple profile and tablet configurations, UI mapping for tablet area and its buttons have few issues compared to the UI in X11, and some reasons they're waiting on a new update to the Wayland protocol, things like no session restore for native Wayland windows, picture in picture windows from web browsers, graphics programs that require color accuracy, calibration profiling tool like Display Calibrate, and things that haven't even been started yet or a work in progress. Anyways, in summary, while Wayland offers a great modernized approach to display server protocols, its adoption is clearly massive as more and more projects are defaulting to it, but it's also hindered by quite a few challenges. We talked about accessibility support, inconsistent input methods, absence of hockey functionality, specific global, and overall, I think a lot of these projects are just excited for a potential to modernize the Linux graphical stack and get around some of the limitations and inefficiencies of X11. This is a server protocol that's tailored to modern use cases. So there's a lot of optimism around having Wayland because it's rapidly improving. It currently has greater potential growth when compared to X11. Well, let me know what you think about the Wayland adoption below. I'd love to hear from you. Is this a good thing, a bad thing? What pitfalls have you saw using Wayland? If you haven't already, think about subscribing below. Would love to have you as part of the community and you'll get more videos about Linux and programming. Catch me in a great community on Discord 
and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.